All right, everybody. Hi, uh, my name is Joseph Jerome. I'm currently a visiting professor of communication at the University of Tampa. Uh, in a past life, however, I worked on sensor data, augmented reality, and Meta's uh, Reality Labs outfit. Um, so I'm not totally sure it's a great thing to start one of these lightning talks with an apology, um, but I'll at least start with an acknowledgement um, that at least for a moment, I was sort of on the front lines of this universe where the metaverse was everything that was going to happen. And it, obviously on the Gartner hype cycle, metaverse way, way down there. Um, Facebook changed its name for a year. Everybody to hire chief metaverse officers. And then everybody sort of realized nobody wanted NFC backs t-shirts on legless avatars. Uh, so, uh, of data, it's Srisha with BBs. It's really intertwined with all of the stuff I just talked about, augmented reality, the metaverse. Um, but why is spatial community a little bit different? Uh, let's start with a show of hands. Who here has heard of the Apple Vision Bro? All right, let the record reflect that the, almost the entire room raised their hands. Um, so we're talking about Apple entering the ecosystem. And if you go to Apple's website right now, they will tell you that the Apple Vision Pro, their, their fancy new piece of technology, is welcoming us to the era of spatial computing. Uh, so, spatial computing is here. I want to make an argument that spatial computing, let's not think of this as a buzzword. In fact, it's been around for a long, long time. Um, virtual reality researchers in 1993 uh, were describing spatial computing. Um, you move away from all the fancy custom leases that Amazon and the Microsoft and other big tech companies put out. And their developer facing materials very frequently mention spatial computing. And then, obviously, of course, Apple has joined in the fray. So this isn't just a buzzword, it is a thing. And it's gonna, I think, dramatically change uh, how we interact with and, and understand technology. Um, so what is spatial computing? Uh, so at a big level, I think it's basically, we have, we have all sorts of tech that's hacked that's sensors. Um, we have had huge leaps in computer vision. And it asked that White Hawk has to mention artificial intelligence. You wrap all three of those together, and you have a bunch of devices, every device really, not just fancy headsets and AR glasses, so really any device you can think of that's packed with this stuff um, that understands the world around it. Um, it not, doesn't just understand and scan and analyze this room, but it also understands where other devices are. Um, it understands where it is in relation to other objects in space. Um, and this is, this is a big deal. Uh, because uh, I'll try and say a little bit more about this, but um, in some respects, people are like, how is this spatial data any different from location data? We already have GPS on our phone. Um, we're talking about technologies that understand how devices are moving in space, how we are moving in space uh, to a centimeter level accuracy. Um, and this presents huge potential. Um, Meta, they play a DNS Live Max initiative, which is going to combine all of this information to create a contextually aware map. And, and think about what this means. All of this data compiled into one big soup, um, updated 24-7, 365 at a centimeter level accuracy uh, that everybody is contributing to. It basically is just going to allow us to understand, not just us, these devices, these companies, everyone, to understand our world at a level we really just haven't appreciated before. All of us understand the word GPS. We are talking about VPS, a visual positioning system. Um, it's one thing to sort of look at the grand ambitions of big tech companies, but this has huge implications shifts for uh, navigation. You know, think about trying to locate your Uber. Even today, uh, a bunch of us are all, you know, trying to all randomly get to the airport at the end of State of the Net. It's highly likely, you, you know, you're, you're gonna walk out of the street and then you'll share to see if you got the right license plate. Um, with spatial computing, everybody's gonna know where everything is all the time. Um, one other word to describe this is basically a complete digital twin of the world around us. So what does all of this data look like? Uh, and this is the not excited part of talk. Uh, it's sort of technical, we need words like geometric meshes and point of bodies. Um, these are the graphics that were helpfully put out by Magic Leap with the launch of their first headset to strike spatial computing. Um, Meta, to its credit, did a, a, a guide with the launch of the Meta Class 3 last fall, spitting out these graphics, and you know, now suddenly the stripes, wait, uh, the Seychellers, see the uh, mesh data. 
Basically, all of this data exists on a spectrum from really, really abstract information uh, to more polygonal things that, uh, you know, more reflect our reality. Um, this, for example, is what the Apple Vision Pro or Rev, how the Apple Vision Pro sees the world. And as you can, as you can see, there are polygons that come together to create recognizable objects. So what it be my we've got legal table shares. Uh, here's a scene of one of the Magic Meat headset scenes. It's, you know, it's in shares, the trees, that you know, in the background of this, writing as this chair of a 95% confidence. And I imagine most of you are saying things like, who cares? I don't care about that. There's nothing problematic. This is all innocuous information. Um, except, taken at scale, uh, all of this information about our environment allows you to infer all sorts of stuff about a person's environment. Um, the type of furnishings you have indicates your wealth. Uh, the type of organization you had, with your bed in the back, the way it's as good as your religion is. Um, not for nothing, if we're scanning in uh, bongs or certain types of plants, we might be able to determine that what your you know, recreational proclivities are. Um, these are big, big sensitivity issues. Uh, not for nothing, this has been called by the wire, the, the, the technology has enabled a cold surveillance state. I think about this, I'm a privacy lawyer by trade, so I think about all the privacy issues here. But I also think that there are huge trust and safety implications. Uh, there's big property interests. We are overlaying on top of the real world a bunch of digital information um, that upsets how people traditionally understand space. Uh, so, you know, for example, what happens in a universe where we've got all those devices and you know, we're gonna map at a centimeter level accuracy some indigenous sacred space. And we're gonna do this uh, as sacred spaces on the side of a really dangerous mountain. That, again, raises property and safety issues that I can't even begin to comprehend. And that's on top of the privacy interests at stake. Um, Meta has put out a little white paper that offers up some solutions. Uh, they offer up uh, by standard application, use of controls, user education. Um, I mean, I don't mean to put too much cold water on that. They offer up some other more high polluting education or technical solutions that they have gone into the detail about. But I don't think that this is really going to work here. Uh, you know, no one's buying a, a $500 at a class three, or no one's buying a $3,500 uh, headset just to enable you to confirm that they're going to turn off all this functionality. Um, and then, you know, maybe user education helps. So I'm not sure a bunch of ways it might really solve the issue either. Uh, so what do we do? If you need polarity on your own, what Niantic went through is maybe some precedent. Um, you know, not for nothing, they've had all sorts of people patching critters on front yards and all of us who And eventually, after the law got a, a involved in the state law suit, Niantic eventually agreed to prevent the place of some of this Honda via content within uh, 40 years of the state of Brandon Hall. Um, had time banner place restrictions. If you're a First Amendment lawyer, that should sound familiar or put it in place for our public parks. And then they implemented robust pre approval and prong uh, deplay handle mechanisms. That sounds like, a, again, a trust and safety professional is really. Um, we're going to need that. We're going to need this soon because even as the metaverse is safe in view, companies are investing heavily in this sort of mapping capability. Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, quite a big announced Overture Maps a few years ago. Um, I've been, this is where I crawl myself. I've been, been worried about this for years. Uh, uh, I continue to convince the Meta to be very concerned about this. Uh, I've been partnering with Kobe Fiegen at the uh, IAP uh, to have a couple of solutions, but I don't think we have very good solutions. Uh, so my emphasis here is, I hope you guys get involved. Uh, I don't think the policy community has been thinking about this, uh, and I hope in a quick lightning way, I've gotten you engaged on the future of spatial computing. Thank you. Thank you.